Steve Retard is the president of the Hella Corporate Center USA, and it's great to have you here to talk about what's going on in Hella. Mm-hmm. It's got to be the golden age of lighting right now because there is so much technology mm-hmm. and so much the designers and even the engineers can do with that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But I got to believe one of the things that you're really focusing on right now is safety through mm-hmm. lighting. Mm-hmm. And why don't you walk us through a bit of what you're doing there? Sure, absolutely. Thanks, John. And you're right. I mean, with all of the aspects of implementation of better control strategies through the electronics that we have in solver basis, we've been able to do a lot with the technology in order to be able to improve the safety, but also the convenience and, and, uh, and, and styling aspects that come through the lighting. But you can see some of the examples we have when we talked about matrix beam implementation or advanced driving beam where you have basically the high beams on at all times and then trying to drive uh, with them on to provide that much more illumination for the driver, but be able to avoid glare with the uh, with the oncoming traffic or those in front of you. You see continued evolution there based upon all of the uh, those technologies we have available. So we start to see now where we see vehicles coming and we make a basically a tunnel of darkness coming from the high beams. We can also start to do predictive analysis to say we have a turn signal on the car in front. We recognize that with the camera and then we already start to create a tunnel of darkness for the vehicle to drive into. And when you say tunnel of darkness, I mean, you can actually shut off part of the light so you don't blind an That's oncoming correct. driver. Absolutely, absolutely. So you can dim down certain parts of, of the illumination in order to, you know, not um, blind or glare the person in front of you. And, and But still keep all the lighting available so you have lighting illumination at, at distance or on the side, basically, to see, you know, pedestrians or, or the sidelines, let's say, in order to be able to, to you know, have that visibility available. And, and we start to take that a little further with implementations like um, dynamic laser spot, where you're also trying to say, since we have light available, let's create more light so that when we have driving on a, a country road, to be able to see even further by using different technologies like laser to be able to have double the reach of a, of a traditional high beam. And then saying, based upon the information that we have available from GPS or the camera, so I'll see them when we have a curve up coming and then actually use basically a matrix of these dynamic spots to be able to, to then illuminate the curve at a great distance. So the driver sees that you know, already before they get to the curve itself. And I know you're looking at not just improving lighting for the driver looking mm-hmm. out, but mm-hmm. for others to understand what's going on in the car, too. That's correct. That's correct. So, so lighting isn't just to be able to see, but also to be seen. So if you think about topics, especially with autonomous vehicles, it's very important to be able to communicate to the outside world what the vehicle is doing. So you can imagine the scenario where you have, and you've seen probably some of these studies where you have an autonomous vehicle and it's, and it's coming up to a crosswalk. The pedestrians are standing there. The car is coming to a stop, and yet they don't know what to do. They're uncomfortable because typically the, you know, what tells them it's okay to cross is that engagement between themselves and the driver where the driver sees them and they know they've been recognized. And now without, without a, a you know, driver there, they don't have that confirmation. So you can see that they're uncomfortable. What, what do we do here? So the idea then is to do certain things like having an industry-wide implementation for exactly the same type of lighting on a vehicle that says this vehicle is in autonomous driving mode. And, you, and, and so the, the pedestrian and even other cars know that's the case and know how to respond to that. But it has to be done in a way that the whole industry is doing exactly the same, the same thing. So they automatically recognize that. Just like you do when you see now the tire pressure monitor light go off in the vehicle. We all know what that means. Speaking of autonomy, Hella, even though it's known for all its lighting, yes. you're doing a lot in radar, too, we, we which are. ties into autonomy. Tell, tell us about your efforts there. Yeah, that's correct. So we've been for a, you know, developing radar for a long time, as well as other um, you know, sensing devices with uh, camera software and, and LIDAR also. And uh, we've been able to basically drive that uh, business unit forward in a good way. Uh, we see great, uh, great penetration rates now for the traditional blind spot detection, lane change assist uh, features that we have all together. And then now we see... Uh, uh, with, you know, the uh, encroachment of not just autonomous vehicles, but also all the, again, more elaborate controls of the vehicle, like autonomous parking and these things that are in between phases for autonomy. Then we see use, utilization of higher frequency radar that has better, let's say, um, you know, range resolution, better discrimination of the object. So we can kind of tell, is it, you know, is it a, a trash can or a person, which may change a little bit of the, the control strategy you do in vehicle. Mm-hmm. I got to believe one of the challenges now is how do you integrate yeah. all this mm-hmm. stuff? Because... Mm-hmm. 
when we see most autonomous vehicles mm-hmm. now, they have all these protrusions of sensors sticking out. I'm sure packaging is a big issue for you. Yeah, absolutely. And it has been for a long time in terms of trying to find a way that you can bring the technology in the vehicle, but do it in a way that still is, you know, approvable from a styling standpoint. And so as we went through the driver assistance system phases, let's say, of implementation for sensing, that was a really big driver. And it still will be in the future with AV, although it seems that we're a little bit more accepting of having a big, bulbous, let's say, LIDAR scanner on a, uh, on a vehicle today. But of course, we won't want, really want to see that in the future. And you see innovations, let's say, with, with LIDAR, we're going from instead of a mechanically rotating system, which, which of course is, is large and is cylindrical in its basis, uh, to go to a lot of the solid state LIDAR, which then uh, allow for much a more shallow depth. And then with the shallow depth, but still the wide opening angles, then you can more readily bring that uh, the sensor into the into the vehicle in a good way. And speaking of styling, there's a lot that you're doing with lighting these yeah, days to yeah. enhance that. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and again, that that aspect of the higher um, control strategies that we have for lighting isn't just for. Um, you know, uh, more control for the functionality lighting, but also for the appearance. So you see now with many vehicles, you see great approach routines where they're basically you walk up to the vehicle and then they're illuminating, you know, the lights in a, in a sequentially firing way so that it's really an attractive and, and fun and, and, and interesting way to see the vehicle itself. And it's distinctive and people see that and they remember that and recognize the vehicle. So it's a really, it's a great selling uh, ploy for the OEMs. And that's why I say, I think this is the golden age of lighting and automotive. Mm -hmm. Steve Letart, thanks so much for taking the time to give us this quick update of what you're doing in these, these areas. Great. Thanks, John. 